quick glance at the history books shows that within just a few generations, mankind has developed entirely new technologies. Today, we are able to send complex space probes to the farthest reaches of the solar system, eradicate diseases that once meant certain death, and understand the world around us more precisely than ever before. Despite all these milestones, however, our species' achievements, to date, are nothing compared to what a civilization can theoretically achieve. Well, that's what the so-called Kardashev scale says anyway, a categorization that makes it its business to quantify the developmental levels of extraterrestrial communities. In today's video, we'll show you the basis of these classifications and the unexpected possibilities they offer. Want to learn more about the groundbreaking discoveries and unique spectacles in the cosmos on a regular basis? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click the bell to stay updated from now on. By giving us a thumbs up, you're motivating us and showing that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. The Kardashev Scale How can the developmental progress of a civilization be determined? If we go by the opinions of Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, this exciting question can be answered as follows. On the basis of their energy use. In 1963, the expert devoted himself to the study of the quasar CTA-102, thus becoming one of the first scientists in the Soviet Union to advance the search for extraterrestrial intelligences. In the course of this work, a fundamental thought began to germinate in Kardashev's mind. What if extraterrestrial civilizations were not only just as advanced as humanity, but even millions or billions of years ahead of our species? In the context of this, the astrophysicist developed the Kardashev scale mentioned at the beginning. According to this categorization, which was published in 1964, the civilizational progress of a species can be read directly from its energy consumption. Basically, the Kardashev scale distinguishes between three types. The first type describes a civilization that is capable of harnessing the entire available power of a planet. A civilization of type 2 is again capable to convert the total power of its host star into usable energy. The third and last type then pushes energy utilization to a completely different level. Such a highly developed species can even utilize the total power of a full-grown galaxy to understand how much one type is superior to the other. Here are a few examples. A type 2 civilization is roughly equivalent to 10 billion type 1 civilizations. A type 3 civilization, in turn, can be compared to 100 billion type 2 civilizations. And in which range does mankind now settle within the Kardashev scale? Well, the somewhat sobering answer is, we have not even made it to a type 1 civilization yet. Even though the original Kardashev scale did not actually provide for any intermediate steps, modern researchers put the current value of humanity at 0.72. A brief look at the course of the recent past shows that we have climbed 0.14 points within 100 years. Given the exciting, yet theoretically basic nature of the Kardashev scale, a fundamental question arises. How might a civilization in reality succeed in harnessing the overall power of a star or even a galaxy? Theory and Reality What mankind is still far away from in reality has already existed in theory for several decades and goes by the name of Dyson Sphere. Just like Kardashev, the British-American physicist Freeman Dyson dedicated himself to the search for intelligent extraterrestrial life. He followed the principle that the energy of a mother star, after its complete use by a species, must also be released again in accordance with the law of conservation of energy. The corresponding spectrum of the released radiation of the mother star would be shifted to longer wavelength infrared radiation. So, in order to detect highly developed civilizations, it would be advisable to search for such anomalous stars in the gigantic expanses of the cosmos. But how would an artificial construct, which can use the total energy of a star optimally, actually be built? Well, regarding to the possible Dyson sphere types, 
Different assumptions exist. The most realistic one seems to be the so-called swarm sphere. This futuristic installation is made up of a large number of independent solar collectors that circle the central host star. The individual collectors could differ significantly from one another in terms of their shapes and sizes and also form individual subhabitats. However, there are some subtleties to consider here. If a Dyson Swarm were in the form of a disk, some solar collectors would be submerged in the shadows of other collectors as part of the orbit, somewhat degrading the overall efficiency of the construct. If science fiction devotees have their way, however, the agony of Dyson's sphere choice falls on an oversized shell that completely encloses the stellar energy source. Such structures have already been presented to us in the context of Star Trek. But to what extent can fantasy be linked to reality at this point? Often such a Dyson shell also contains an inner atmosphere, which at the same time embodies a gigantic habitat for different organisms. However, the physics we know puts a spanner in the works of this exciting notion. Since there is no independent gravitational field inside a hollow sphere, the host star would absorb the atmosphere and all moving bodies. However, the materials currently available to us also make the realization of a Dyson shell extremely unlikely. The extreme tangential forces that act here exceed the compressive strength of steel and the like, and only time will tell whether the necessary resistance can be guaranteed with the help of new types of materials. Another solution would be to allow some components of the shell to rotate around the star. The centrifugal forces generated in the process would probably relieve the structure sufficiently. Further Forms In fact, the theoretical range of forms of Dyson spheres extends beyond swarms and shells. The Dyson bubble is also regularly mentioned here. This structure would be composed of very little mass and would be held stable mainly by radiation pressure and stellar winds. The construction of a Dyson ring would be no less challenging. If one wanted to place it around the sun, its radius would have to be about one astronomical unit, or about 90 million miles. To defy the enormous tangential forces, engineers would have to find a way to create a balance of gravitational and centrifugal forces. Or in other words, weightlessness would have to prevail on the surface of the Dyson ring. The proposal of a so-called Matryoshka brain presents itself even more spectacularly. Such a megastructure would be used to power a gigantic computer the size of a star. As the allusion to the famous Russian dolls suggests, Matryoshka brains would be composed of many nested Dyson spheres. The innermost sphere would absorb energy directly from the star and release large amounts of heat during computation. The above would in turn absorb this heat and use it for its own calculations and so on. A puzzling observation. Given the various constructs that exist in the minds of experts and laymen, it almost seems a bit sobering that we have not yet succeeded in tracking down a real Dyson sphere. However, a few years ago, researchers recorded a series of puzzling observations, which led to the suspicion that they have indeed stumbled upon a futuristic compound of solar collectors. The focus of scientific interest was Tabby Star a main-sequence star of spectral class F in the constellation of Swan. Between the years 2009 and 2013, experts noticed that the celestial body, which is about 1,450 light-years away from us, was undergoing strange fluctuations in brightness. In extreme cases, the star even lost up to 20% of its original luminosity. The explanations which came up concerning this discovery were equally numerous as different, and indeed, some people thought it conceivable that the registered brightness dips could be attributed to the existence of an artificial Dyson sphere. In detail, it would have been a swarm of solar collectors which partially absorbs the luminosity of the celestial body. However, the supporters of this enthralling theory might have felt a bit disillusioned when the experts published their newer data. Accordingly, everything indicates that the obscurations had a dusty background. Thus, the extremely fine particles swallowed the light of different spectral ranges to varying degrees. A circumstance which can be caused neither by a planet, let alone by an artificial structure. If and when a real Dyson sphere will be found is therefore still literally in the stars.
However, should a species actually succeed in accomplishing such a feat of technology, the way to a Type 3 civilization would also be open. Consequently, such a civilization could use the same means as a Type 2 civilization, only on a very large scale. Finally, however, we do not want to leave unmentioned that the Kardashev scale is by no means free of criticism. In this regard, the main argument is that we are not at all able to understand the nature of extraterrestrial civilizations and as a result cannot make any statements about their behavior. Consequently, it is possible that extraterrestrial intelligences have means and ways at their disposal that we cannot even imagine at present. And now we want your opinion. What do you think about the Kardashev scale? Do you think that an intelligent civilization could be capable of realizing the construction of a functional Dyson Sphere? As always, drop us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Are you in the mood for more exciting articles on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other videos on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the images in the credits. Thanks for your interest. Take care, and we'll see you next time.